I'm Chris from Windows, and hey, you can do this. Because this is Air Windows Chamber 2. Now let me tell you what's going on with this thing. Because this is one of the science experiments where, you know, maybe this is not a necessary plugin to have. Like, I'm not sure you actually need this thing, but the stuff that it can do, there might be times when you do. So, Chamber is a reverb plugin from Air Windows. And the purpose of it is experimenting with my reverb algorithms. In this case, this would be the 4x4 feed forward reverb algorithm, much like in Chamber, in Verbity, etc. And if you put this control thick all the way to full crank, it equates to what you had out of the original uh, chamber, although I think I might have a slightly different envelopment of the, well, let's find out. So there you are. You've got a chamber sound. You can make it sustain. You can make it be a very small box. Or you can make it be an enormous thing. Now, I'm pretty sure this is one of our dual mono um, reverbs. So it's not doing the fanciness of like the most current Verbity or Galactic on stereo stuff. I believe this is going to give you. Um, a stereo reverb in the sense of stuff that is hard left will produce a reverb that is hard left. Or possibly not, because it sounded a little bit like it blended. So, uh, but point being, that's not really the concern here because this is capable of doing some tricks. And it's all about regeneration and this thick control. See, Chamber has all these different little reverb uh, delay lines inside it, and the way that these feed-forward reverb systems work is it combines the delay lines to make many, many different echoes coming back. And Chamber does a set of different echoes that combine into a continuous sound, kind of like this. Well, Thick takes these different echo returns, and we can demonstrate them by taking reverb down to nothing. That's all you have out of just one echo. What Thick does is rather than having some of them be very immediate, and others not so immediate, Thick starts mushing them together again. Until they are perfectly synchronized. So essentially what that is, is a Chamber 2 as a reverb turned into nothing but a single slapback echo, which is a householder matrix of different reverb echoes all combined together to equate to all the same thing. Now why would you even want that? It's very inefficient compared to just doing one echo. I'll show you why.
you can get a sort of weird blurry effect out of it. There's almost a flangey quality going on. So now you have a single echo, but the single echo is very blurred and dense and weird. We got this flangey quality here. And of course you can fiddle with the delay. So now we have the dry sound and a weird squishy sound, which is like this. And it's not really a delay, but it's not really a reverb. Except it is kind of like a reverb. Because the deal is, if you do something like this, and you have reverb on this uh, setting where everything is trying to get as close as possible to the ultimate um, delay-like effect. Here, I'll show you. We've got to continue fooling. Oh, and it just made a noise. Check this out. We just made a glitchy noise, because we can on 100% regeneration. So now we've got that in the echo loop. Since thick is at zero, it's acting like nothing but a single echo. And it's going to infinite echo because it's on regen one. But if we put thick on something other than one, See what's happening? It's turning into a reverb wash. So you can use this for effect. Note that I've got one of my uh, wet dry things going on where all dry is dry signal only. It goes to one to one at middle position and then all wet is all the way over to the right so everything between halfway and one is full crank for the reverb output. And if we hit it with just a little bit of sound. There is an effect for you. In fact, let's make it even weirder. Let's make it one of the tiniest settings I can find and just make a little noise. There you go. Sound effects are us. And this is only because I modified the chamber algorithm in order to make it so that all the little delay times, rather than it being efficient and having the delay times that are short stay short, all the delay times can go to pretty much full length. And so there we get a, uh, a sound effect. And of course you can fool with it. <coughs> Excuse me. As you bring in more thick, Parts of delay time get shorter. Here's a little setting which is like uh, more of a fall off into different kinds of echo sound. And of course, you can take Regen right down. In which case, you're only getting one slapback because it's neither quite a delay or quite a reverb. And if we increase thick a little bit more, and again, we've got full wet again, we have something that's kind of like a delay and kind of not.
and we can fool with the delay time, of course. A little slapback like effect. But we can have it be more like a delay. And just kind of like a delay, kind of like an echo. I mean, kind of like an echo, kind of like a reverb. Oh, but we can get even weirder. As they can start blending into more reverb-like qualities. And of course, if we're getting into that kind of nonsense, You can go for effect. because this is one of those reverb algorithms where it glitches out quite violently as you change it because it's not really designed to have a uh, direct changing of the control and have that be nice. So you get glitch madness in a quite serious way. And very aggressive noises made out of the manipulating of this control. That wasn't present in the same way in regular chamber. So here's the deal. That's maybe a little extreme. That's why we're giving it to you, is because it's a little extreme. It is going to make ugly noises when you move the control. That's what happens with these reverbs, where we've got this kind of thing going on. Even if I don't have anything happening, I'm still able to flake it out because what's happening is old stuff was captured in some of the longer areas of the reverb tank. And when we set it to this, we have the areas that are like original chamber, but then as we keep it at full delay, and crank up thick, what's happening is other reverb echoes inside the algorithm are being switched from the tight little section that is currently doing silence at full regeneration to the longer sections where audio was still captured and we're smashing and glitching the buffers and you get stuff like this. So will you get exactly that sound when you do this? Uh, I don't know. It depends upon what you were putting into those buffers in the first place, but you can sure play with it. And then we can make it fade out by adding that back to the regular buffers again. But I'll tell you what, there was noise happening when I moved thick from zero to one. So what's going to happen if I snap it to one again, we're going to get other buffer noise similar to what we already had 
except for that there will be a silent area from the area that has now gone to silence. And there you have it. Same trick. You might do this while recording the output just for sound design kind of stuff. Or I don't know what, like, I make plugins for a lot of different people. For instance, there's a bunch of drum and bass guys on the Dogs on Acid forum in London. And it's more like giving you the opportunity to do insane stuff. I have just captured some of that little uh, drum and cymbal stuff in the loops. And when I sweep it back over again, I'll start opening those up and feeding stuff back into the infinite regeneration. And I get this. Add a little lemon break behind that and you've got something going on. Tend to muddy it up a little bit when we do this to it. There you go. And that's all with the new control on chamber two, thick. And all it is, is the ability to go sort of crossfade between chamber as a reverb, and chamber is just a kajillion delays that are all the same length. So you can do this. This is about the misuse of technology, and I hope you enjoy chamber. I'm working on a bunch of other stuff. For instance, you can see I have the Godot engine over here. And I'd really like to dive into that and find some fun things to do. I just had to shuffle myself out. I just had my chimney swept and the chimney sweep came and gave me a little bitty chimney sweep. That being a cool thing that he does. Gotta love Vermont, small business people. And, uh, I'm going to get back to work. I will, I think, do more work on Orbit Kick this coming Monday, because this Monday I don't have to fix a broken plugin as near as I can tell. Like, chamber. Ought to be. good enough for all practical purposes. Bearing in mind that it's designed to be glitched out, it's designed for you to mess with it in such a way that it'll freak out and make weird noises as part of your sound. And uh, once it gets incorporated into the dailies for the VCV Rack plugin, and I should follow up on whether the guy that was doing a cardinal version of that is uh, having any problems because my hope is that they can grab the VCB rack version that is being grabbed from the stuff that I do with the VST version and there can be a sort of chain of stuff going along that can end up leading to lots of people being able to do this. But yeah, in any um, rack style system, if you have this, definitely put some weird CV onto things like delay and thick to see what kind of effects you can make out of it. Because again, this is designed to be glitched. This is not meant to just behave itself and be a normal reverb. It's designed so that you can take one of these feed forward algorithms and really make it jump up and do tricks. That is the hope anyhow. So I will talk to you later and I'll see some of you on Monday. I hope you like my other videos, and I hope you like Chamber 2. See you later. Bye-bye.